Hello, welcome to part 32 of Let's Play Dark Souls. Last time we finished off Nito, got the we also got the Rite of Kindling, and a few other cool things from the Catacombs and Tomb of the Giants. Uh, one of which is this Black Knight Halberd here, which I did uh, go ahead and upgrade to plus 5. I figured uh, we've been using nothing but the Black Knight Sword, so let's try to mix it up with another Black Knight weapon. You know, big variety. <laughs> um, anyway, while I'm in here, I'm going to put on the rest of the Iron Ring, because today, today is very exciting, because... We are going to be starting the DLC, yes, and um, that journey begins here. Uh, we're going to be going uh, over there. One thing to point out, though, is you'll notice that, uh, what's her name, um, Dusk, her summon sign is missing. So uh, that means something's wrong in her timeline. And, um, you know, again, with Dark Souls and time, how it all works is very all over the place. But. Um, Basically, once we got that uh, amulet from the Duke's archives, if you remember, which um, I'll go ahead and show it here. Um, so there's all of our Lord Souls. Get up there. Um, this one here, Broken Pendant. Half broken stone pendant finds a pre originate from Ulysseal. Powerful magic can be sensed from its ancient stone, yet men of this time can neither manipulate nor sense its power, which has a distinct air consisting of both reverence and nostalgia. Now, um, it's a bit of a vague description, but basically once you grab it, that allows you to access the DLC. Um, now, where exactly that'll be is over here. And um, if you notice now, over there is a uh, menacing black portal. Uh, ooh, there's also an item. We forgot to uh, pick that up, but um, only because I didn't feel like running back. But um, back when we defeated the Hydra, and you can summon Dusk after you talk with her, you can go ahead and run all the way back here. And right here, you'll find her set. Um, you know, it's just if you want to dress up as a princess, it's pretty good. Uh, now, the Crown of Dusk is actually worth pointing out, because that will uh, boost the power of your spells, like all types of spells. So, um, whether it's miracles or sorceries, or even pyromancies, I believe. Um, at the cost of, you'll take more magic damage in general. So, a bit of a trade-off, but if you want to just min-max your damage, and you're doing magic stuff, definitely you'll want to grab that. But anyway, right here, since we have the pendant, we can go up to it and examine it. And this will thrust us into the DLC. All right, a bit of a interesting start there. The Giant gross black hand pulled us in. And here we are just in a small root cave. We're gonna just uh, light the bonfire here and rest up because uh, right out the gate we actually do have a boss fight. And this one can be a bit tricky, especially using the weapon I'm not familiar with. But we're gonna see what we can do. Um, mostly annoyed because we are gonna be able to cut off this thing's tail. And it can be very tricky to do that. <laughs> so um, we'll see how well I do. And um, yeah. This is the Sanctuary Guardian. It is, uh... A manticore is what this is in real life. Not that this exists in real life. Ow. But, oh yeah, so this thing counts as a demon, by the way. So our already overpowered weapon is going to be doing even more bonus damage. Ow. Oh. Yeah, so this guy can be very dangerous. Okay, I think that's the attack we want to look out for. Because that'll give us an opening. Ow, ow, ow. And a bit awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is, I have a feeling this is going to take a few tries. But, um... You know, it wouldn't be a Dark Souls episode if I didn't die. So, um, I don't want to waste those two humanity, though. So I will try to pick those up. Um, but I don't have too many souls. I burned them all upgrading this thing. I had just enough Twinkling Titanite, which was cool. So let's, uh, let's go for the tail first. Once I get that, we can uh, quickly finish it off. Oh, too high. Oh, nope. Ow, ow, ow. Please don't. This is one of those bosses, by the way, that really will not let you heal. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Oh no! That was my chance. <laughs> Please let me heal. Oh yeah, and he will poison you by the way. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, Manticores in real life, they are... Oh man! Could have gotten this so quick. But hopefully that means another opportunity to be here soon. Uh, but yeah, real life manticores are, you know, lion, scorpion, and goat mixture. So they did a pretty good job with that here, I guess. Come on, I think, uh, I don't remember it. There's like a flying attack that we want to be on the lookout for. That'll be our best chance here. Unless we can... Oh, there we go. Got it. Yes. All right. That wasn't too bad. Let's, uh, finish him off now. Let's see, we'll just be two, maybe three hits. Hey, okay, don't get greedy with your attacks, by the way. Gotta heal. Alright, nice. He fell back. Man, I gotta get used to the range on this thing. Okay. One more should do it. There we go. Alright, not too bad. I think I only died once, right? Um, ooh, yeah, got my souls. And they're over there. Alright, let's get the let's get our humanity back. Uh, we got another humanity for killing it. Alright, so that went pretty smooth. I was worried that this was gonna be like the entire episode already. <laughs> but um let's take a look at that tail that we uh went through the trouble of grabbing. Um this is a cool one. It's a whip that does poison damage. Um it looks kinda awkward in your hands, but um it's also kinda grossly, it just like flops around, but <laughs> It's, a, it's a definitely a unique weapon. Let's see what it says. Slice tail of the sanctuary guardian. This flexible spike. Highly poisonous tail would make it a rather obnoxious weapon. I agree 100%. But uh, yeah, we'll just stick with our halberd. Which, if you notice, we don't have enough strength to just use one hand with. So we are gonna have to go shield this today. But that'll be fun. This next area is um, an interesting place. It's uh, it's pretty cool. But it can be annoying because it's really big, and I want to go ahead and grab. There's a certain set of armor that's just sprinkled throughout the whole area, so it may take a minute to get through everything, but we'll see. Um, either way, we're going to start in like a little hub world area, and um, keep your eyes peeled because this whole area should look familiar. Um, just go ahead and light the bonfire. I'm also going to definitely kindle this one, which begins with reverse hollowing. Like I said, this is a big area, and I find that it uh, always take a lot of damage, which isn't ideal. Uh, question, do I want to kindle it, like, really high? I don't think so. I think Tecmo will be fine. And if I die a few times because I ran out of Estus, then we'll reconsider adding more. But anyway, over here we have, uh, looks like one of those mushrooms that will punch us to death, but we can actually talk to her. Well, look at this one. From what far away age hast thou come? Thy scent is very human indeed, but not intolerable. Ah, Princess Dusk's savior. Thine aura is precisely as she described. I thank thee deeply for rescuing her highness. But Princess Dusk is here no longer, snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. And so I must ask, couldst thou once more play the savior? Um, we're of course gonna rescue our princess, fairy princess lady. Thank you. I am Elizabeth, guardian of this sanctuary. Something of a godmother to Princess Dusk. I shall assist thee to my utmost, for I am one with the sorceries of all the seal. Alrighty, so we can buy some stuff. Some uh, repair power, gold pine resin. Um, the spells, I believe, we'll see, I mean, what's her name? Dusk actually were selling these to us, but not really too needed. And another catalyst, so I think she has a few more things to say. Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient beast and threatens to swallow the whole of Ulysses. Knight Artorius came to stop this, but such a hero has nary a murmur of dark. Without doubt, he will be swallowed by the abyss, overcome by its utter blackness. Indeed, the abyss may be unstoppable, 
Still, I have faith that Princess Dusk may be rescued yet. So yeah, as you can hear, there's a few um, big names there. The DLC is really awesome because it touches on um, a lot of cool lore aspects of the game, um, specifically the Abyss and, of course, Ulysseal and Artorius himself. So, Thou shalt see an abyss yeah, I don't think she is. She's just going to keep saying that. So yeah, anyway, our quest is clear. We got to go rescue Dusk again. And uh, one thing to note, too, when we first talked to her, pay attention to how she said, from what age are you? So, like, the real question isn't exactly uh, where we are, but when we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Level-wise, yes. Uh, Vitality's 30. That's good. That's about what we want. I think now we just want more endurance. A little bit more equipment load and stamina is always nice. Get that up to also around 30-ish, and then and maybe start pumping intelligence and faith. I don't know. We'll see. Either way, we definitely need more endurance. I kind of, in hindsight, wish I was doing endurance and uh, vitality. I mean, vitality and endurance sooner, as opposed to getting my faith and intelligence up so high and then doing nothing with them this whole time. But I wanted to just have it ready for our equipment, which we are going to be very close to getting after this, by the way. So um, begin the level begins a nice little peaceful walk through here. And um, yeah, if it wasn't obvious, by the way, um, well, actually, we haven't been to this part yet, so I will uh, I won't spoil it just yet <laughs> where, where this is supposed to be, but... Oh, no, no, no! All right, great start. Great <laughs> start. All right, so yeah, watch out for the cliffs because there are some um, slopes there that will uh, kill you real quick. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Uh, let's take two. And um, I don't think I had like, any souls. I think they spent them, and they're right here for us. So either way. Um, so yeah, ignoring what just happened. Um, up there, we got a couple of fellas who are gonna be. Now you can hear the little tippy taps of their feet. They're like uh, these gardener guys. One shot. Very nice. Um, I think yeah, the the extra range on the halberd here is gonna do us good. But um, yeah, so those small guys are, and then these big guys here are gonna be what composes of all the enemies. And the best strategy is to sort of lure the small guys to you, finish them off, and then you can focus on the big ones. And yeah, they hurt really hard. They also do, oh, they do that. <laughs> so watch out there. Let's try not to die. And this is what I was meaning by, uh, it can be a bit of a nutrition, because you can see this one guy has already taken off half of our health. Oh, by the way, it's got a cool jumping attack. And that's just the strong attack, uh, right? So the strong attack is you jump and do an overhead slash. But if you do a proper, like, forward and our right trigger, you'll do, like, a jumping horizontal. Wait, that was wrong. You'll do, like, yeah, a horizontal swipe like that. So, cool weapon. Nice and very versatile. Um, but yeah, this is a very, just everything looks the same kind of area, so it can be easy to get lost. The main advice is try not to let too many guys notice you at once, because these guys are not fun to fight when there's a lot of them. Okay. There we go. Black Knight Halberd. I want to talk a little bit more about this thing. This is um, this is the main weapon that speedrunners like to use with the game. Uh, the strategy that they'll do is um, remember if you remember that Black Knight at the bottom of Darkroot Garden by uh, the Grass Crest Shield. Um, you, if you know what you're doing, you can get to him within like five minutes of starting the game. And so speedrunners, what they'll do is they'll uh, run there, kill him. Uh, if they don't get the Halberd, they just restart the run. And then once they get it, they will uh, proceed to kill all the bosses very quickly <laughs> with it. Um, they also use a weapon that, we, um, not a weapon, but an item that we haven't gotten yet called the Red Tear Stone Ring, which will, uh, is like the blue Tear Stone Ring, except it increases your damage instead of defense when you're low on health. And since they're pro, they know how to like literally just never take damage from bosses. <laughs> so it's not a big deal if they have no health. But... I'm not quite that pro, unfortunately. 
And uh, yeah, so two quick attacks and a strong attack. We'll finish these guys off. Very good to know. Um, I'm already disoriented. <laughs> I think we came from that direction. So, um, oh, yeah, this area. I think we want to wrap things up sort of on this high ground area before we go down there, though. And you can see it's an item over there. Maybe that's actually across the edge. Alrighty, so then... First, we'll grab whatever's over here. Um, there's definitely at least one piece of armor here. Yeah, in this general area, that is. Yeah, so some of this geography might start looking a little familiar. Um, oh yeah, so this will be a shortcut, right? This will eventually be an elevator that we can use. But not yet. Um, oh yeah, right here. So, the armor that we're looking for is going to be the Guardian Gauntlets, which is um, those big guys that we were fighting right now. I guess they're called Guardians then. Um, yeah, it's a very heavy set of armor, so we probably won't use it. But I do want to show you guys where everything is, as always. I'm not sure if there's anything this way. This could just be a wall. That eventually goes back to the start, yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's just head over to that, like, group of plants that we saw. Um, yeah, this is, a this is Dark Root Garden a long time ago, is where we are. <laughs> um, I'll just say it rather than making these obvious hints. Um, before the darkness sort of set in, um, you'll notice that, you know, the, uh, the gardeners here, the small guys, eventually turn into those, uh, plant things that we fight, and then the, uh, I guess the big guys are those stone warriors. No. Oh. Thankfully, uh, ooh, do I still have, I don't have my wolf ring on. Uh, shameful. All right, that's uh, yeah, there's a lot of them here. So again, be smart. Don't get too many's attention that you can't handle. Ow, stop it. Our armor is pretty good though, so we won't be taking too much damage. Me anymore. All right, well, at least we got one piece of armor. Uh, yeah. This is kind of what I was talking about. This area can be a bit of a slug in terms of having to die and redo it and not <laughs> redo it. But I haven't played in a bit. I, um, this is my first episode back since getting my wisdom teeth pulled. And like I said a few episodes ago, um, I did a big recording batch before then. So I'm a little bit rusty. Um, but hopefully, uh, I'll get back in the groove soon. I believe we want to go this way. Yeah, the good new thing is that a lot of those enemies are just chilling, so they won't actually notice you if you just avoid them. Uh, these guys will every time you show up, though. Okay, I think he's having trouble, so we can just ignore him. Oh, another one. Uh-oh. The big one noticed us, too. Oh, hello. Alright, just this guy then. Ooh, ooh we got more moss. Alright, not worth it. Ow. Okay, can I dodge these attacks? Okay, let's get a little more careful here. Ooh. And there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I believe we wanted to go that way. Uh, just finish these guys off again. Very nice. And uh, so, gotta make our way back there. Um, they don't notice us, that's good. Take you out, and you still hit me though. Slight pause there, but we're back. Um, right where we left off. Just finish this guy off. 
Okay, rematch time. Rematches always go smoothly for me, right? Okay, play smart. Uh oh, follow up. Nice. Boom. Alrighty. Let's grab those. All a thousand of their souls there. And right here, we'll get the leggings. Yes. So now we just need the body and the head. And then we're all good. We can cosplay as the uh, guardians all we want. Alright, so now I think we go this way. Yep. No. No. <laughs> Where do we go? Um, it's like in this general direction. Maybe down. Oh yeah, right here. Okay, yeah, this is where we go. Um, oh yeah, so pay attention. We got like a kind of cutscene here. Yeah, so that's um, that's a spooky dark dragon. <laughs> uh, we'll learn more about him in a second. Not in a second, but later on in the level, rather. So um, we'll just let his menacing glare stick with you for now. Um, and then there is a uh, like guardian above us that will try to ambush us. Normally he jumps down onto the bridge and then like you're kind of stuck, but. Sorry about that again. <laughs> People keep asking me for questions. Oh god, it came back just in time. Oh. Yeah, I guess in a way these guys are also kind of gardeners. I feel like they do a lot of digging around here. Uh, get, get down there. Um, okay, I think so that's where we came from. Yes, yeah, so now we want to drop down here. And you'll notice uh, the train is starting to get a lot more... Uh, Corrupted, I guess you could say. Uh, these are the first signs of the abyss, right? Now the abyss, I don't know if we've talked about the abyss itself too much, but um, the abyss is, oh, these ones have scissors, by the way, so watch out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the abyss, and ooh, I think we can make this jump. Famous last words. Wait, no! <laughs> I messed that up. I pressed the wrong button. I thought this was Dark Souls 3 for a second. So in Dark Souls 3, you like press the left stick to jump, but I forgot in Dark Souls, you press the sprint button to jump. All right, well, I will uh, meet you back there. Take two. Oh, we did. Awesome. All right, well, that is an easy jump to make, it turns out. We just got to remember to press the jump button. It's super hard, I know. Um, ooh, got another jump. Let's not mess this one up either. Ah. Okay, yes. And I believe this will be the helmet. Yes. Cool. Um, and I guess we can just drop down here. Okay, so yeah, don't fall down these holes either, because um, I guess that's the abyss down there. Ah! No, bad. Oh, that was three hits. <laughs> so yeah, the abyss. What is the abyss? Uh, the abyss is basically a big pit of darkness. Um, it's not the best description. It's more like... Uh, it's not necessarily like a single pit of darkness, but like think of it as like literal darkness, right? That it, as it grows and expands, it like eats things. It's almost like a black hole, but rather than being some like huge interstellar thing, it's like infinite point. It's more like just like black hole um, sludge, <laughs> I guess you can call it. So yeah, when the abyss starts to take root um, in an area, we start to see what's happening here. Um, it also will mutate and corrupt things. Um, we'll see that in the next area more. But um, you can see in the train here that the abyss is starting to take root. Um, it's also, you know, evil, the abyss, quote unquote. That is, um, you know, it's being dark and all that. Very, I'm turning around here. Okay, so that's where we came from. So we head in these directions. Yeah. All right, we're uh, nearing the wrap-up point here. So. I do want to hurry this along. Uh, just take these guys out. There's a shortcut. Once uh, once we get that shortcut, I think that's when we'll call it. And these guys go down real easy. And, ooh, here, over here you can actually see these guys doing some uh, gardening. 
and then also the abyss, you'll, you get things like these gross, um, I don't know what you call them, things that they start to sprout. I guess like fungus kind of. Anyway, once you mess with one, then the whole squad is going to run up on you, so keep that in mind. Um, I do know you can get their, uh, their pitchfork, but I don't know if you can get the, uh, the scissors. Um, there's another gold coin, of course, which we got one of those in Anorlando. I forgot if I mentioned, but they're completely useless. Um, you can feed it to uh, Framp, and he will give you, I believe, a thousand souls for it. Okay, this part will be tricky because there's two of them. But let's see if we can. Oop. Yeah, this is when it gets annoying because then when they get into a rhythm like this where they're just covering each other's attacks, I have a hard time. Alright, one down. Not bad. Alrighty, ooh, it looks like we got something. Oh yeah, these guys dropped Twinkling Titanite. I forgot about that. Both of them did there. Very nice. Uh, let's see. So, is that, is that a crystal? I think it is. Yeah, not that we really need any more upgrade. Oh uh, no. I'm not even going to reload because we don't need any more upgrade material. Um, ooh, that might be the last piece of armor that we need. So let's go grab that. Ooh, watch out for these guys. Okay. Uh, nope, just a large soul. Uh, yeah, so the... Okay, the final armor, I feel like we might get that after a shortcut, actually. Could be wrong. Either way, if I don't find it... Oh, that might be it over there. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that for every item. Um... But yeah, in case that is the case, um, I'll sort of just proceed as normal, and then once we've gotten like the late shortcuts, like from the next game, of course that's not it. But um, once we get all the shortcuts done for the whole DLC, then I'll do a final pass and really find it. Um, so yeah, oh, this is one of the shortcuts. Okay, and that'll take us. Oh, so technically not a shortcut. Um, so yeah, in that case, let me go back up. Let's see if there's anything else on this level. Because, uh, as you can see from that fog wall, that will be a boss area. Um, oh, no, this is just, just a cliff. Nice view. Over there, by the way, is going to be the next area, the uh, town. As you can see, it's becoming uh, a lot more broken up in shambles because of the abyss. So, um, yeah, let's go down. Let's find the proper shortcut here. And then we'll wrap up this episode. Got uh, I think we got got a decent amount done. We got most of the forest area done, which was my least favorite part of this whole thing. Um, yeah, I think over there is. Uh, so there's a character there. Um, we don't quite have enough time to talk to him when uh when we circle back, we will. Um, but as you can see, he's like your steampunk kind of top hat, trench coat, <laughs> kind of smiling guy. Uh, definitely a. Uh, for those of you who have played Bloodborne, uh, he's definitely uh, got looks that are similar to a Bloodborne character. Um, a hunter is what I believe they called. I never played Bloodborne. I don't have a PS4. But anyway, this takes us back to where we found that first armor set. Um, and that means that we can quickly run here from the bonfire if we die. So yeah, that is going to do it for this episode. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun, as always, making it. And I hope you had fun watching it. And on that note, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.